we have to keep criticizing creationism and fighting back against it whenever we, we see it and whatever it comes into play. Okay, so the self-described friendly atheist is trying to attack creationism. Let's see if we can help him out. Okay, sure, I'll help him out. You play the ignorant creationist who tries to overcomplicate their stance and calls it science, uses terms like evolutionist, all while having an air of smug self-satisfaction as if what you are saying is actually intelligent. You know, instead of asinine. So let's, let's talk about why we should be interested in creationism and we should keep attacking it because this is a problem that's not going away and we need to be very vocal about why it's problematic. So I'd actually love for you to criticize it, but you need to first understand the basic principles. Now I've already critiqued your design argument and I think there's a few problems you have and if you want to really criticize it properly, you need to make sure that you understand it. God did it. Check. Oh, and good job on playing your part so well. Properly vague but implying complexity where there is none. If I didn't know any better, I'd think you were a creationist. If you remember from 2008, when they had those big debates with all the Republican presidential candidates, at one point they even asked, how many of you don't accept evolution? And three people raised their hands like they were proud of this. That's ridiculous that three potential presidents said, no, I don't believe in science. All right, so trying to equate the word evolution with science is a logical fallacy. You can't just interchange those two words. You need to understand the difference between the methodology of science and scientific theories. Once you understand those basic definitions, you'll be able to be much more effective in your criticism of evolution and creation. Wow, you're really good. You've managed to not say a damn thing worth saying and still put out that condescending tone. Not to mention, the study of evolution is a science, and you and I both know this is what he's talking about. I guess your stupid rebuttal is my fault. I didn't explain that I would play the straw man. So you don't need to make one of his argument. Oh, good job playing that it's just a theory card at the end there and implying that he is the one that doesn't understand that a theory is just a guess. Oh wait, that's not what a scientific theory is. Are you sure you're not a creationist because you play one flawlessly? When you have a nation filled with people who don't accept basic scientific knowledge as fact anyway, you are saying we're totally fine with uneducated, ignorant people running very important parts of our you know, democracy here. People who are confident in their position and who can actually defend them with rational arguments don't need to attack their opponents. When you, fer when you refer to people who disagree with you as ignorant, that just makes your case look weak. Plus, you refer to yourself as the friendly atheist. Are you only friendly to people who agree with you? Bam, hits us with the ad hominem accusation and thinks it invalidates the conclusion. The problem with that is, it's just because he calls them ignorant doesn't mean that they are not ignorant. It doesn't quite work that way. If you promote creationism over proven scientific fact, then you are at best ignorant. So, calling those guys ignorant wasn't an attack at all. It was giving them the benefit of the doubt and implying that they just don't understand what evolution is, how it works, and how it is studied. I guess you know what it is, so I will not call you ignorant again. Keep in mind, if you say what you think it is, and you're wrong, that would just mean that you're intellectually dishonest, which is worse than ignorant. But even today, there are school districts all over the country that are trying to teach the controversy, a controversy that doesn't exist. Okay, just because you're not aware of the controversy or you don't know all the facts, that doesn't mean that there is no controversy. All right, textbooks today still use the Miller-Urey experiment for the origin of life. They even state that they recreated the conditions that prevailed on the early Earth. Is that not controversial? Because John Cohen wrote in Science in 1995 that many origin of life researchers now dismiss the 1953 experiment because the early atmosphere looked nothing like the Miller-Urey simulation. That's not the controversy he is referring to and you know it. First, the teach the controversy thing comes from your side. It implies legitimacy to creationism that doesn't exist, so therefore the controversy doesn't exist. Not to mention the experiment you mentioned is not a controversy, was shown flawed by scientists, not creationists, and is taught for a specific reason. The Miller-Urey experiment is still taught because it was a significant event in the history of science. What you fail to mention is that it is also taught that this experiment was later found to be flawed by modern-day geochemists who show that the atmospheric conditions were not as Miller and Urey thought. It is not taught as an experiment that definitively showed how life started on Earth as you implied. Your own underlying spot shows this, recreating in the laboratory the conditions that may 
have prevailed on early Earth. You display astounding intellectual dishonesty by quoting it incorrectly and out of context. This intellectual dishonesty shows that you are incapable of living up to the standards you set for others. Teach the controversy, a controversy that doesn't exist. But hey, it's just those crazy creationists, right? They don't know anything. The chemist Robert Shapiro wrote a book criticizing the origin of life and the Miller-Urey experiment, stating that we have reached a situation where a theory has become accepted as fact by some and possible contrary evidence is shunted aside. Oh, the hard-hitting quote mine. Yeah, that's never failed to create an argument at all. Wait, it has. And it's about to again. Robert Shapiro was a chemist who believed the origins of life on Earth came about naturally. Did you know that? He just disagreed with the order in which the building blocks of life, so to speak, appeared. You keep talking about the Miller-Urey experiment as if it wasn't successful, which it was. The only reason it's been invalidated is because of the incorrect atmospheric conditions. It still produced life. The origins of life, by the way, is not evolution, it's abiogenesis. Oh, did you think that you successfully implemented the red herring? Too bad. It looks like you're just gonna actually have to stay on topic. Evolution is the natural process that resulted in the immense diversity of life on Earth and has nothing to do with how life started. So the false battle creationists like you have invented, of creation versus evolution, is the logical fallacy. And one you're just gonna go ahead and keep on throwing out there with that smug condescending tone, huh? A controversy that doesn't exist. He actually concluded that this is, quote, mythology rather than science. So why is this mythology, as Robert Shapiro refers to it, still in the textbooks? See, the fact that you aren't aware of the controversy doesn't mean that there is none. It just means that you don't know all the facts. Other textbooks still try to use vestigial organs as evidence for evolution. They claim that we have features that serve no useful function and they give the tailbone and the appendix as an example in humans. The only problem is that the tailbone actually serves as an important anchor point for muscle groups. A controversy that doesn't exist. Even the appendix has function too. In fact, in the journal New Scientist, they stated that its greatest importance is in the immunological function it provides in the developing embryo, but it continues to function even in the adult. These aren't really just controversial, they're actually lies that are used to support evolution. A controversy that doesn't exist. A controversy that doesn't exist. Anyone who claims that there is no controversy obviously knows very little about evolution. I told you I would be the straw man, so there is no need to keep up with this shit. You know damn well the controversy he is referring to is the creationist argument of creation versus evolution. You are avoiding this. Why is that? Is it because you know he's right and therefore cannot contend with what he's actually saying? So you're just going to keep up with the examples of science's greatest strength of self-correction and somehow imply that this is some sort of controversy? This is not a controversy. It's science correcting itself, growing, learning. You know, something the creation story cannot do. It cannot change. If it does, it shows your source of creation, the Bible, as a fallible source. And if you can't accept the logic that explains evolution and how it works, and you can see all the evidence and totally dismiss it, I'm afraid of how that's going to play into your decision making with anything else you do. When the facts are right there, and you could look at all that and say, nope, I'm going to believe my storybook instead, I, I'm really worried about the decisions you're going to make as, as hopefully a rational human being. I'm worried about that. But which facts are you referring to? See, I was actually reading Richard Dawkins' book on evolution, and he said that it is a remarkable fact that the greater part, 95% in the case of humans, of the genome might as well not be there for all the difference it makes. So is this one of those facts that you're referring to? Because this fact happens to be wrong. Just over a year ago, the ENCO project found that 80% of the genome has a biochemical function. In fact, they even predicted that 80% will go to 100%. And they said that we don't really have any large chunks of redundant DNA. This metaphor of junk isn't that useful. And so perhaps you should be more specific about which facts creationists deny. Because if it's anything like the fact of junk DNA, then yes, we deny it because it's not true. And we don't just blindly accept something because it supports evolution or because it's in the textbook. You're being intellectually dishonest again. You're saying that you don't agree with specific facts of evolution. You keep pointing out the self-correcting mechanism of science and have just now been arrogant enough to take credit for those corrections. Creationists didn't make those corrections, and you know it. Even though the proof has long been verified, the battle's still raging on. 
I'm really curious what this proof is. You seem to have it, so perhaps you should let us know. I actually have a challenge going on right now for anyone to prove evolution. If you say it's a fact, prove it. Aaron Ra tried to take your challenge, but instead of just working with him to establish a consensus between the two of you on what you would consider proof, you avoided answering his simple questions. He's got an awesome video about the experience. I'll leave a link in the description. We have to keep criticizing creationism and fighting back against it whenever we, we see it and whenever it comes into play. So I hope that my criticism can help you out. Right, right now some of your definitions are a little off. Some of your facts are wrong. So keep studying, but not too much or else you might actually start to doubt evolution. And if you do, evolutionists are going to start giving you very compelling evidence to try and convince you. No, I'm, I'm just joking. They're actually going to start mocking you and ridiculing you if you have any doubts at all about evolution. It's kind of interesting how that works, actually. Oh, well. What criticisms? All you offered was examples of science correcting itself. The friendly atheist never expressed a single fact and only offered an argument on why creationism must be attacked as it directly conflicts with what we know on the origins of human life. This is the controversy you completely avoided. The mocking and ridicule doesn't happen because of your doubt. It happens because of the source of your doubt. Your complete rejection because of unfounded biblical claims that have been shown to be wrong countless times. Finish him! You sit there in your palpable smugness, speaking with a condescending tone, implying that scientific advancement is a controversy. You ignore the point the friendly atheist is making and instead just point out advances in understanding brought about by scientific study of evolution and attempts at discovering the natural origins of life and dishonestly join the two as one, implying that evolution is an attempt to explain the origins of all life. You create a straw man doing this to avoid the simple argument he was making, which was that science uses evidence and creationism uses fairy tales. You are mocked for this, and because your ego and beliefs cannot stand to be wrong or scrutinized, you think that the mocking just shows that you are right, as opposed to really understanding why you are being mocked. It's not because you doubt evolution, and in fact being skeptical in the scientific world is a good thing. It's because you use biblical accounts as your bottom line source, and are too dishonest to say so, and instead use a number of logical fallacies to make your points which are themselves unclear. Bring evidence of your claims. This is all it will take. Real evidence that supports the creation mythologies. You can't do this, so instead erroneously mock science for its ability to self-correct and claim this is the reason for your doubt. But to us, you pointing those strengths out and misrepresenting what they are seems more motivated by doubt as opposed to causing it. Warning, not clicking like and subscribing to St. Roman has been scientifically and or medically linked to bloody toilet water, amphibian infestation, lice, pet mortality, boils, hailstorms, locust swarms, three-day power outages, death of firstborn males, two-week menstruations, and erectile dysfunction.